Good morning. And welcome to the Basilica Parish of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. Today is the Feast of the Epiphany, honoring the visit of the Magi and the manifestation of Christ to the world. On this day, we consider our own call to reveal Christ to others and to fulfill the meaning of Christmas. Please know that all are welcome here today, regardless of our age, orientation, race, whether we worship regularly or only when we can, whether we embrace the life of the church or are struggling to find God in the midst of it all, Jesus comes to all of us, saints and sinners alike this day. It is the mission of our parish to welcome and open wide our doors to all who come here to pray. Our slogan for this mass is our pastor, Father Mike Vetrano. Let us lift our hearts in worship and praise as together we stand and join in our entrance hymn, We Three Kings. It can be found in the music program. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace, the peace, the love of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Happy Epiphany. You guys let me down over and over. Let's try that again. Happy Epiphany. Happy Epiphany. You know, this is really an important feast. The Epiphany is, in a way, more Christmas than Christmas. Why would I say that? Because the whole sense in the Gospels is that the incarnation, the very first, the first, the birth of Jesus was secret. Shepherds, angels out in the field, but then at one point later becomes manifest to the whole world. The epiphany of the message being told by all the believers who come to the place to see the child and to believe. So they're the three kings and they were also us who come to the place of birth and then go to tell the world. So let's today ask for the mercy and peace of our God that we are able to do that in our own lives. You came to gather the nations into the peace of one kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sins and our divisions. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You feed us today and always with your body and with your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us praise our God.
Let's take a moment now to bow our heads in prayer, to be quiet within, ready to hear the gospel, the word of God today. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant that in your mercy we, who know your, you already by faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your right and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather you and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. You shall be radiant in what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied by out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries, Hermidian, and Epha, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When, <clears throat> when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and we have come to do homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. Assembling the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the child was to be born. And they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written through the prophet, and you Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah since from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do homage. After that audience with the kings, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising went before them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and entering the house they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and said to him, and, and did him homage. And then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then, having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Gospel of the Epiphany. What a wonderful gospel. It's so full of symbolism. And of course, whenever something is richly symbolic, there's so many different ways that you can talk about it. The, the three kings themselves, who are they? they? This is their one time on stage in Matthew. We never hear really about where they came from or what happened after that, just that they were visitors and went home changed by another way, by having met the child. And then that they're following a star. Oh my gosh, isn't that wonderful? Following stars. 
looking at the stars, so richly symbolic. And then they come and they, they find the child, searchers, and they give presents, they have gifts. They have gifts that they have brought with them because they believe that the child is royalty. And so they bring gifts fitting for a king. Their wealth and symbols of their worship, their faith, all of this, the deepest part of themselves, they are ready to lay down before the child. Think today for a minute about gifts today. Because we want to go from receiving the gift of the revelation of Jesus to being on the epiphany the people who manifest that gift out to all the world. In a way, we go from something secret within ourselves to something that we make known to others. And it, it happens through gifts. Gifts, of course, are, are a pretty big deal at Christmas time, right? Just came through all that gift giving, and uh, maybe you're still in the process of going back to exchange the gifts or something. No, never mind. Um, right? It's complicated gifts. What do you give people? What do people really want? What's an appropriate gift? We go through a lot of different things about that. I want to give a gift that shows that I care. Does that mean it should be expensive? It should be worth a lot? Or maybe I don't want to think a lot about a gift, so I just give somebody, you know, some money, buy yourself something, a kind of an open-ended gift, if you will. And then there are gifts, and, and I don't know, has anybody done this where the gift is something that, that you've made yourself? How many do that this year? A gift that you made yourself. Some people make their own Christmas cards. I'm looking at one of them. You're not the only one, Lewis, a great artist in our parish, but a a friend of mine, Lewis draws his Christmas card. A friend of mine is, uh, is a weaver, and so they, every Christmas they have a little patch of weaving that they send out. Just something made by them. Not a whole big thing, not a towel, not a, anything like that, a blanket. Just, a, just something made, thoughtful. I somehow have come a long way in my life and realized that sometimes that's a better gift than anything else. My, goddaughters are in love with bolognese. They got all these gifts for Christmas, but I gave them both a good-sized container of homemade sauce. You would have thought that they had found the star. <laughs> Doesn't always go well that way. A good friend of mine is a priest, let his niece know that on her birthday he had planned, a, he had planned to give her a very special gift, and she should be thinking about it, he's going to come with this very special gift. And what Father Rob did is he called the principal of the school where she attended. He said, listen, I, this is probably breaking all the rules, but I'd sort of like to take my niece out to lunch. And, and they, you know, said, yeah, yeah, it's okay. And so he arrives at school, and they call her down to the office, you know. And there's her uncle, Father Rob. And he says, uh, what's going on? He says, we're going out to lunch. She says, oh, you're going to give me the gift? He said, I, I am the gift. He said, she looked at him like, oh. <laughs> you know, with that sort of peculiar teenager letdown look, you know? You know that look? That like, hmm. <laughs> but the personal gift is something to think about today. Because the, the gift of Christianity, the gift of our own faith, the gift of our own, let me say, knowledge of Christ, can only be given personally. If I said that I wanted to give another person my faith, my knowledge of Christ, well, I, I could go down to the store and buy symbols. I could buy them a cross or a statue or something like that. But, but, but really, in reality, the only real way that one communicates faith is personally, with your presence. I even kind of like the way those two words go together, that the present is your presence. That's the gift that you have to give. Sometimes people have seen that in the, in the story of the Magi. Today, I, I think one of our songs is the, the little drummer boy, right? He doesn't have anything he thinks to give. He's not royal. He doesn't have gold. He doesn't have gifts of worship and possessions that he might bring and lay before the child, but he has 
He has himself that's symbolized in his own talent to play the drum. This is so I, I came to the place and I, I played my drum for him. What we are really called upon to do is to play our, whatever it is, before the others in this world who need the best of what's within us. It's not our ability to give money, it's not our ability to share wealth or, you know, gifts of need or something that somebody wants on their need list for the holidays. It's something much, much deeper than that. We all kind of try to find that, to be able to think about someone else and to think, what do they really need from me? And how could I give that? That's the gift of presence. That's the gift of, of really being there to share that gift of faith. So on the Feast of the Epiphany, all of those symbols help us to realize that we have the answer to what people and the world really need, really need these days. And it's within us, but it needs to be made manifest. It needs to be taken from being a secret that I hold inside to something that I really share. And whether it's something I make or something I say or the time that I give, that's the gift. And in that, I find a different way to the heart of Christ. No one ever meets the heart of Christ without being different. That's why those original magi, when they encounter the child, they go home by another way. They recognize that going home by the way of the one who sent them is perverse. And so there's a bit of evil and a bit of treachery in the world. But there's always a better way. And to find that is to spread and make known the presence of Christ. Let's stand together now. We profess the faith that we share. We pray the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. And is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The wise men followed the star and found Christ. With confidence, let us ask God for we may now need. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that the revelation of Christ may be light to all people and nations who yearn for peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For harmony in our communities, that cultural and ethnic diversities may be appreciated as a source of strength and richness in our culture and in our worship of God, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For respect for life, that the vulnerability and innocence of Christ's child may inspire us to reverence and to respect the humanity of every person, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are struggling because of cold and storms, for those who face the winter without adequate housing or clothing, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who, like the Star and the Magi, lead others to Christ, especially pastors, and catechists, our Pope and our bishops, teachers and counselors, artists, scientists, philosophers, and theologians, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are sick and for those who care for them, for all who are listed in our parish bulletin and our parish book of intentions, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died in this past year, especially Pope Emer Emeritus Benedict, 
and Anne Marie Lorido, and for all those who mourn their passing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. At this Mass, we pray especially for the people of the parish and James Drew, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring all of our prayers before you today. We pray them in the name of Jesus and the power of the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> As we bring our gifts to the table of the Lord, please join and sing their offertory hymn, The Little Drummer Boy. It can be found in your music program. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray. We see these gifts of your church, in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but the one who has been proclaimed, sacrificed and redeemed, Jesus the Christ who lives and reigns both now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as light for all the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with all of creation, we praise you as we sing. It is evil. 
You are holy indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray together now for the building of God's kingdom in the words Jesus taught us to pray. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. To each other we extend the sign of God's own peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join in singing our communion hymn, Some Children See Him. It can be found in your music program.
need something to look forward to in January, plan to join us at our winter night out at the Plaza Cafe. It is just a good warm dinner by the fire with a special deal for Sacred Hearts. Sacred Hearts Heart Shimmers, sorry. Singles, couples, friends, and family are all welcome. Mark the date, Tuesday, January 24th, beginning at 5.30 p.m. Reservations are to be made directly with Plaza Cafe. On January 15th, the Knights of Columbus will sponsor a bus to St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City for the annual Pro-Life Mass with Archbishop Dolan. Please see the bulletin for contact information. Attention all medical professionals. The newly formed Association of Catholic Medical Professionals will be joining us for 5 p.m. Mass next Saturday. Mass will be followed by a meeting in the Paris Center and a talk given by Father Mike on spirituality behind mindfulness and meditation. See our bulletin for more details. Prayer cards honoring Pope Benedict are available at the doors of the church. Please take home a copy of the parish bulletin, which is filled with upcoming events to help to start the new year. Also, please take home a copy of one of our parish calendars. So the uh, Guild of Catholic Medical Professionals, uh, <clears throat> new chapter to Long Island and uh, started by some of the docs out of uh, Stony Brook in the main campus, but <coughs> they're gonna be out this way to uh, have mass next <clears throat> Saturday night and uh, any medical professionals are welcome to of course come to mass, but also to join the group and come to the talk and uh, it's a nice way for uh, Catholic physicians and health workers to support each other. So. Maybe think of spreading the word about that, and you can always drop me an email if you would like more information about that. And today we also had a new lector, Ella, is up there to read for the first time. <laughs> what is the gift that we, you know, what's the gift in the church of spreading the word? The gift of ministries, catechists, lectors, altar servers, musicians, um, all of them give a, a gift, homemade in one sense, of their hearts and spirits, and it's the most important gift to everything that we do here at Sacred Hearts. Let's pray and give God thanks. <clears throat> Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to partip participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May God bless us now and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love, to serve our Lord. Thank you. Have a great epiphany, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Father. Please join in singing our sending forth hymn, Go tell it on the mountain. It is in the music program. <laughs> 